Hi everyone, welcome to another Tommy Emmanuel tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at Close to You, Tommy's arrangement of the classic Bird Bacharach song. Now, before we continue, a few quick pointers on the guitar. The guitar is in standard tuning. There is no need for a thumb pick or a flat pick, it's just a traditional finger style all the way through. But you might notice one difference if you compare my guitar to Tommy's guitar, namely, I'm not using a capo at the moment. Tommy uses a capo on the second fret and this makes a few of the uh, larger chord shapes a lot easier. But teaching this song uh, is actually harder with the capo on the guitar because there are so many position shifts, 7th fret, 9th fret, even 11th fret, um, that using a capo actually makes it difficult to properly explain every single position because in the back of your head you always have to add up two extra frets. So that's why I left out the capo uh, for this tutorial, just to make everything as clear as possible. When you get the piece down, it shouldn't be too difficult to just add the capo on the second fret and play the song two frets up. But for the sake of the explanation and for the sake of clarity, I'm leaving it out right now. So that's all there is to know. Uh, just a quick pointer, I'm, we're, this is the very first uh, day of spring here uh, in Europe. It's beautiful weather, I worked in the garden, I'm sunburned, I cut my finger while, while uh, working uh, and gardening. Uh, and I'm uh, doing this tutorial with the window open, so if you hear a lawnmower or some birds in the background, that's just the neighbors doing their business. So, enough chit chat, let's get straight to work and get into the intro. Here we go, one time and then I'll come back for the explanation. Didn't you wish that all of Tommy's intros were as simple as this one? It's not difficult at all. Let's take a look. You're starting out with a B chord on the 7th fret. I'm saying 7th fret, you are working from the 7th position, but you are actually not playing the 7th fret right away. Ring finger, 9th fret on the D string, middle finger, 8th fret on the G string, and the pinky on the 9th fret of the high E string. In between there, is a open B string and you are playing it just open. So you can prepare as well for the second uh, voicing and that is by putting down the index finger on the seventh fret of the high E string as well. So this is the first chord and this is the second chord without the pinky. The way you play this rhythmically is quite simple thumb for the bass note and then using the index finger, middle finger and ring finger at the same time to play the chord. And that's the only little fill. What's happening is you're playing the chord voicing with the index finger on the 7th fret, adding in the pinky again, playing the full chord and pulling off with the pinky without striking the rest of the chord again. That's all there is to it. And we're ending the intro with a natural harmonic on the 7th fret, on the B string and the E string at the same time. A little double stop harmonic. One more time, really slowly, and then it's into the first verse. And then we're heading into the first verse. Now, there is a lot of repetition going on in this song, and as you will see, the very first verse come back, uh, comes back two or three times and there's not really that much that changes. So there is not that much uh, of music to get into your fingers before you can play the whole song. Let me play it one time for you and then I'm going to come back yet again and give you the explanation. That's the first verse. Now, 
Straight off, when you're heading into the melody, there is a bit of a sneaky little uh, trick Tommy's using. You're starting out with second fret on the A string, first fret on the D string, and first fret on the B string. Both of those first frets are played with a little bar uh, with the index finger. Now, you might expect to play this note with the middle finger, which would be the logical thing to do, but take it from me, you rather would like to play this with the ring finger. Now, this is a strange fingering, but when we slide up, we're not staying in the exact same shape. We're sliding up from this shape to the fourth fret, this shape. And now you can see there is one fret in between here. So you're sliding with the index finger from the first fret to the fourth fret, and you're sliding with the ring finger from the second fret to the sixth fret. So, no space in between the index finger and the ring finger, two, one fret in between those two. So, that's why it's, it, I find it easier to play it like this, instead of doing this. The stretch between the index finger and the middle finger feels very, very awkward. So, I would suggest starting out with the bar chord with the index finger and then the ring finger for the lower sounding note. And then straight into an E major ninth chord. Now this chord shape is actually one of the few chord shapes that's probably something, a uh, chord shape that Tommy found to play the melody easily on top of the chord shape, because this is not a really often used chord shape, but everything else in the verse actually is. So most of the other chords are based around open chords or well-known bar chord shapes. So, the very first chord shape is middle finger on the 6th fret of the D string, ring finger 6th fret on the G string, pinky on the 7th fret of the B string, and the index finger on the high E string. And the pinky in the beginning right away is the melody note. There are two things uh, I would like to uh, put some extra attention to. Tommy sometimes uses his uh, boom chick or his alternating thumb technique, but he doesn't really do it in, the, uh, in, in his traditional percussive way with the muting. He is alternating with the thumb whenever possible, but instead of really hitting that higher note, he often do, does a very soft strum in the chord. So that second chord in between there, and it's just it's slightly brushing with the side of the thumb. Now it, this is hard to notate in the tablature because it, it's, there's not really uh, a, a, a right tool to uh, indicate what note should be louder and what note should be uh, softer. But I'll try and, and explain it along the tablature, along the tutorial, sorry, that whenever you have to do this soft strum, it's more meant as an effect. So don't really focus on, on what exact string to play. Don't focus, for instance, uh, in, in this point in the tablature, you can see that you have to play the sixth fret on, on the D string and the G string, but don't worry if you add in that, that seventh fret with uh, the pinky as well, or maybe even the fourth fret on top. It's just a, a really soft strum meant to keep the rhythmic momentum going, but there's, don't really put too much uh, thought into it about what strings or uh, what harmony you're playing at that point. Now that little melody part might be confusing if you're new to this uh, style of playing because you are playing an F sharp on the 7th fret, then you're moving down to the E string but to an open E string. So this means that you are moving down to a thinner string. The back of your mind will probably tell you we're going up to a higher sounding note while this is actually a lower sounding note on the next string. And then you're adding in the 4th fret. So 7th fret B string, open E string, 7th fret B string, 4th fret E string. And the 
rhythm in this particular part is, all, is also something that only happens the very first time. You're playing two eighth notes and then a triplet. One, two, three, four. And the last melody note actually lands in front of the first beat. One, two, three, four, one. This only happens the very first time. Second time around, you will notice that this last melody note, the D sharp, fourth fret on the B string, actually lands on the first beat. And then we're adding in the next bass note. The next chord shape is a D sharp dominant 7 chord, starting out as a sus4 voicing, then moving over to a dominant 7 voicing. What happens is you're playing middle finger on the 6th fret of the low E string, ring finger on the 6th fret of the D string, pinky 6th fret on the G string, and the index finger on the 4th fret of the B string. When you move over to the second voicing, the ring finger and the middle finger actually have to swap strings. So what happens is when you move over to from the sus chord to the dominant seventh chord, the middle finger and the ring finger swap strings. So the ring finger will take the exact same note the middle finger is playing and then the middle finger will move over to the fifth fret on the D string. So moving from a sus chord to a dominant seventh chord. that move might be a bit tricky in the beginning, don't forget to keep down the little bar on top as well to keep the melody line going. Continuing with the melody. So the melody line you're playing is 4th fret with the index finger on the B string, 7th fret with the pinky and then 2 the 6th fret on the high E string. Now you might be tempted to do this, go to the ring finger, don't do that. Switch over right away to a full bar to play the next chord in line. So straight to a bar across the 6th fret. That is, that's, this part is what I uh, thought was hardest the first time I learned this song, is you're moving from a D sharp minor chord to D sharp minor major seventh to D sharp minor seventh. Now there's two way to, ways to do this. Tommy plays this from the pinky to the middle finger and then he switches around to a full D sharp minor chord seventh chord with the ring finger on the eighth fret of the D string. This is also how I picked it up when I learned uh, the song from the video, but there is an easier way because he's not actually playing this uh, eighth fret on the D string, uh, so there is also not really a need to, f to fret that note as well, and it actually makes the uh, fingering a bit easier because you can play this just end up on the bar chord without having to swap out the ring finger to the middle finger. It works ju just as fine, so there's no need to swap over to the full D sharp minor chord. So this is the first option, the way Tommy plays it the full D sharp minor chord or you can just play it. but then remember you have to use the pinky again for the next melody line. If you're using this chord shape it's all it's exactly the same it's just the pinky to the middle finger on the seventh fret it's already there and then sliding up from the sixth fret to the seventh fret with the pinky so this is a quite a large position shift that goes by really quickly so we're moving 
from a D sharp minor chord to a G sharp minor chord. Pinky and I'm laying down the full bar chord on the fourth fret. Tommy plays this fill different every single time, so you can fool around with it, but the basic of the fill is you're starting out on a G sharp minor chord with a major seventh, fifth fret, middle finger, hammering on to the sixth fret on the same string to resolve the tension in a, in a simple G, mi G sharp minor chord, sorry, G sharp minor. And you can end with one of those soft strums again. See, so. Then moving over to a wide chord. Now this is one of those chord shapes that will actually be easier if you put the capo on the second fret. An E uh, major chord with an added ninth with the pinky. So you're playing open string, second fret with the middle finger, fourth fret with the pinky, first fret with the index finger. This in itself is a chord shape that pops up quite regularly, but now you're going to, if you want to play it exactly the same way as Tommy, use an embellishment on the first fret. And that might take some work. Again, this is easier with the capo on the second fret, but for uh, purposes already stated in the intro, we're leaving that at, at the moment. So hammering on to the first fret, open B string, and then we're moving to the same chord we used in the beginning, but we're only leaving out the fourth fret on, on the high E string. We, don't, we just don't need it at the moment. To an open E string. And another one of those soft strums. So that's, that's the basic idea. Second time around, exactly the same thing. Now we are playing the fourth fret with the index finger, ending up on exactly the same chord as we used in the first bar. And this little fill only pops in the very first time. The second, third time, fourth time around, it's gonna be something different. So those two bars back to back. Three melody notes you play are actually played in front of the beat, so make sure internally you keep very good time, so count in the back of your head if you need to, and this is the timing if you would count along. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's where you have to put down those melody notes. And that last chordal fill is maybe the hardest thing in the whole song. A bar across the fourth fret, you don't have to bar all the way across the, the neck. You can leave out the low A string, the low E string, sorry. So you're moving all the way up to the fifth string. Ring finger on the seventh fret of the low E string. And then you're playing all the way to the pinky as well on the seventh fret on the B string. This, as if this chord shape isn't hard enough, then all the way at the end, after you play the note uh, that sounds out on the seventh fret of the B string, the F sharp, you will hammer on with the middle finger to the sixth fret on the low A string. That means that the rest of the chord has to sound out all the way through. So really slowly. So that's the chordal fill. 
make sure this whole chord shape rings out nicely and evenly. Again, this is easier with the capo on the second fret. All the frets end up a little bit closer together, a little bit less tension on the guitar. But down here on the fourth fret, the seventh fret, this is actually a painful uh, chord shape. But the good news is you basically got the whole verse down now. So the verse will pop up a few more times, but only the end is something different. There are a few little variations going on uh, in between the different verses, uh, but I'll address those as we, as we pass them by. So let me play this verse one more time, really slowly, then I'm going to continue into the next verse and show you uh, the embellishments or the variations on the places where they pop up. Here we go, one time, really slowly. first first now let me continue I will play the second first for you a bit more up to tempo and I'm gonna come back and explain the variations where they pop up here we go the second verse. As you see, most of the chord shapes, most of the melodies actually maintained. So I'm going to go over it quickly and show you the few embellishments and the few variations present. So we're starting out. Same melody. And as I promised during the first verse, the only thing that changes now is that triplet feel in that we saw in the first verse is gone now. So the D sharp, the fourth fret on the B string actually lands nicely on the beat now along with the next chord. So as you can see, the melody note and the bass note are landing at the same time. Everything else is exactly the same. variation, ninth fret with the pinky pulling off to the sixth fret and then moving down again and sliding up with the pinky to the seventh fret in order to yet again play this G sharp minor chord. Same fill, same chord shapes and now turn around going into the chorus so you're playing a, a D mid B sorry B major ninth chord with D sharp down below in the bass so you get a bar on the sixth fret sixth fret and ninth fret with the pinky on the uh, D string again sixth fret with the bar on the G string middle finger seventh fret on the B string and again the sixth fret with the bar on the high E First chord, you're playing the thumb on the D sharp and then with the index finger, middle finger and ring finger, the top three strings. And then for the next chord, you're just moving down those fingers, one set of strings and you're playing the D string, G string and B string. Chord shape stays exactly the same. Two of a dissonant sounding chord. Index finger, second fret on the A string, fourth fret with the ring finger on the D string, an open G string, and this clashes with that F sharp, that F sharp and that G are rubbing shoulders with each other, so this is a bit of a harsh sound. And then adding in the pinky on the fourth fret of the B string. So this is 
you could uh, it's basically a B chord with a flattened 13 in, in between down there moving to a uh, G sharp with the index finger uh, on, on the G string removing some of that harshness but you're also dropping out that F sharp the pinky stays where he is the middle finger will take the bass note instead of the index finger and the index finger will move to the first fret on the G string open E string to the D sharp on the fourth fret again and then to an A chord with a B bass note Yet again, these are large chord shapes. They are easier if you put the capo on the second fret. The full chord section. One more time, this section of the, of the verse, and then we're moving into the chorus. To the chorus. Let's have a look. So we're starting out with an E major 7th chord. First fret with the index finger on the B string, second fret with the middle finger on the G string. Then we're swapping places, index finger will go to the first fret on the G string and we are adding the ring finger and the pinky both on the second fret, ring finger on the D string, pinky on the B string. And then we're moving that chord shape up two frets but the index finger will remain at the first fret so up two frets index finger stays where it is and back down two frets so the bass line isn't of any particular interest now the first time around Tommy plays a long E bass note and then starts pumping the bass as he progresses uh, throughout the chorus the second time it's a bit different he plays a few short bass notes then a longer and then a few shorter ones uh, I don't think this is something that is particularly uh, written out or particularly arranged so you can be a, a bit freer in your uh, interpretation in this part Playing this two times, exactly the same melody. And then the second time, ending on a pull off with a middle finger from uh, the second fret on the B string to an open string. Moving to the same D sharp minor 7th chord we already used a few times. Adding the pinky on the 9th fret of the B string for the melody. Changing around the thumb to the 5th in the bass. So that doesn't really happen that often during this song. So G dominant to G sharp dominant and then a long and winding run with a low E bass note yet again moving through a set of different voicings for an E chord so we're starting out with E major 7th first fret uh, first uh, finger index finger 7th fret on the high E string 
middle finger 9th fret on the B string, pinky 11th fret on the G string. This high up the neck, this chord shouldn't actually pose that much difficulty and it gets even easier with the capo on the 2nd fret. On the 9th fret if you move it up it's, it's not that hard to play. Despite the fact that it's, it's quite a wide uh, chord grip. To then to a plain E chord, you could recognize this coming from this chord shape. Going to E major 7th with the middle finger on the 8th fret on the G string. And then moving over to E uh, with the 6th degree added in. And then you have to swap over again the middle finger. We'll have to take over from the index finger and the index finger will jump to the 6th fret on the G string. So E major 9th to E major to E major 7th and now swapping around going to the E 6th chord. Melody note all the way through. That's the melody. That's the very first uh, place in this whole run where the melody actually changes. You're already playing the 9th fret with the pinky. Drop down a little bar with the index finger. So you can play the 6th fret on the high E string and then add in the middle finger again for uh, the 7th fret. Ending back up on the same chord shape. That's the melody line. Full run. And then the, uh, the, the showstopper of the song. A little run. Uh, you can name this in a few different, uh, you can put a few different names on this. Uh, I think of it as a little uh, F-sharp altered run. So you're starting with the pinky on the 9th fret, pulling off to the 6th fret where the index finger is playing the note, 8th fret on the B string with the ring finger, and then pinky again on the 9th fret on the G string. And then quickly moving over to the Second position, pulling off index finger, second fret, pulling off to the open string. Again, the index finger on the B string from the second fret, pulling off to the open string. And then, very important to keep all these notes ringing out, middle finger on the third fret of the G string, pinky fourth fret on the D string, ring finger fourth fret on the A string, open E string, hammering on with the index finger to the second fret. And it's very important to try and keep as much of these notes ringing out. Also those top strings where you're pulling off to. So make sure you don't accidentally hit any notes with the left hand while going through this run. That should be the effect you get. As soon as you end up on those bass notes, those top strings should still be ringing out and they give this, this chord a beautiful resonance. Um, it's, it's, it's really a f an incredible find and it sounds amazing if you pull it off uh, with every single note still ringing out. With the little melody part or the little pull off part on top. So that's the whole run. up on this open sounding chord. Again, the distance uh, is a bit reduced with the capo on the second fret and the fingering becomes a bit easier, but the focus on letting everything ring out should be exactly the same uh, playing it with a capo or without a capo. So one more time, the chorus, because this is where we concluded. Uh, one more time, the chorus, and then we're off to the next part of the verse.
first. Now, up until this point, you basically can play the whole song. The third verse isn't anything different from the second verse, but you can start playing around with the different variations. And as you will see, the, third, the second chorus is identical to the first chorus, except for one very, very tiny variation. Here we go, third verse, a bit more up to tempo. Forgot about that. One little different, one f little, little different thing, one fill that, that is actually added in the chord section. And now instead of going up to the open E string, we're playing a bar at the third fret, moving chromatically down to the second fret. And this is something that you can use Next time we're going to play this part a few different times at the ending of the song and this is a fill you can actually add in any time you, any time you like. To the chorus section. And that was the fill, that was the very little fill I, I talked about. Going to this chord playing an open E string and then going back to the second fret. That's the only fill. The rest of the second chorus is exactly the same as the first time. Pull-off fill was exactly the same thing, but there was one sneaky little thing that was changed in the chord section uh, on, on the E chord. Did you notice it? Tommy you, moves the bass note away from the first beat the second time around he plays it. So what he's doing the first time is he's always playing the uh, low E bass note on the first and third beat of the bar. One, two, three, four, one. So that's what he's doing the first time. Second time around, he's going to move away the bass note from the first beat. Now, this takes some uh, rhythmic uh, sense in that fact that most people will actually move their sense of timing to the place where the bass note is. So make sure that you keep counting. That first melody note is actually on the beat and then the bass note will actually be played behind the beat. One, two, three, four, one. So in the last time it's actually on the beat, but that's what he does in the first three chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So the last time it's on the beat. So if you aim for the bass note to be uh, played along with the second melody note, you should be fine. One, two, three, four. One, and then it's the same pull-off lick. A bit more up to speed, this is what it sounds like, so. One more time with uh, counting along. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Next verse. probably noticed I'm starting to play around with the variations. So I used the triplet from the very first verse. I used the melodic variation 
from the second verse. And I use the chromatic uh, variation uh, also from the second verse. And you can start playing around with all those different motifs you got by now. There is not really a right or a wrong way to play this, just use your imagination. If you want to play it exactly the same every single time, then go ahead, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can start playing along as well. Now we're coming up to the closing section, which is, I think, actually the hardest section of the song. So we're just done playing uh, this final section. And we'll play it again. Ending up on a long chord. Pause for dramatic effect, as long as you like, and then it's back to... And this is not something, a little trick I'm doing right now. This is actually needed to change to the chords for the ending section. So you're playing the bar at the second fret, moving up, and you're going to hit on the fourth, on the fourth beat hit the strings with the right hand so you got a little bit extra time moving to those closing chords because they aren't easy at all. This is where the real pain for the left hand is coming. So let me play through the ending section one time then I'm gonna come back and I will provide you with some alternative fingerings because there are a few really 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 difficult chords in this section. Here we go. Now, I can imagine left hand cramps coming in only from watching a few of those chord shapes. So let's go over them. We're starting out with the same chord shape we already used during the chorus section as well. Seventh fret, high E string, index finger, middle finger, ninth fret, pinky on the eleventh fret. Moving over to a much easier D chord shape on the sixth fret. So imagine playing a D chord, but on the sixth, sixth fret, sorry, sixth fret instead of on the second fret. Hammering on and pulling off again on the high E string. So sixth fret on top with the middle finger, hammering on to the seventh fret with the pinky and pulling back off to the sixth fret. And then the real killer of the ending section is this one. Beautiful voicing, don't get me wrong. So this is a piano-like vo voicing with a few really close voiced notes really closely together. Uh, and that hurts on guitar, it always does. So what you get is pinky on the eighth fret on the G string, middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string. And these are only separated by a half step. So they kind of clash together. And then we are not done yet, the index finger on the fourth fret of the high E string. It's a beautiful chord, no doubt about it. But for people with smaller hands, even with the capo on the guitar, two frets up, this is going to hurt like crazy. So why not look for an alternative? And the alternative is ridiculously easy. So this is, as I already might have mentioned, an E major seventh chord. What's an alternative fingering for an E major seventh chord? This. Just a bar across the fourth fret is exactly the same chord without all the pain in the left hand. Now don't get me wrong, this actually sounds beautiful within the song. There's a reason why Tommy plays it this way. It's, it's, it's got a lot of charm, this uh, chord, but it also has a lot of left hand cramps for most people. So, for people who want to play the whole song and, and don't feel like breaking their fingers on this chord, a bar chord across the fourth fret works just as well. With the original fingering, Part. 
now with the alternative fingering. Maybe add in the variation. Much, 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 much easier. And it sounds okay. The melody note is still on top. The melody note is still clear, but you're not stuck with this chord shape. So as always, if you find the extra charm of that really close voiced chord, uh, worth the effort to chase that, then by all means, go ahead. If you want to do this, I, I want to leave you with this pointer. The easiest way to transfer to, the, to that chord is by putting down the pinky first and then leaning sideways towards the uh, notes you have to play with the index and middle finger. Don't start from the index finger building up and then trying to stretch with the pinky all the way there. You will lose a lot of time and most of the time you will end up muting the top strings by uh, placing the pinky too flat. So coming from that F sharp, uh, from that D chord shape, shaped F sharp chord, pinky first and then dropping down to the middle finger and the index finger. to the ending chord. The first time around you're, you're pumping the E bass string again. It's not a, a tight pattern. It's not always the same. So you can sort of put some variations in it. So what I'm usually doing is I'm playing sort of a swing pattern in the bass note. Pump, 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 pump all the way through. But when something is happening on top, I'm leaving it out. to the end chord, no more pumping on the bass note, alternative fingering or the original fingering, let me play the original fingering, and then, and then moving this chord shape down to the third fret, and then now have a good look at this. Now you're playing the exact same chord shape up here, down three frets, and now you're adding in with the ring finger on the fourth fret, the A flat bass note, and playing the third fret on top to get the ending chord. Ouch, this hurts. So this is an incredibly difficult chord. Uh, I get a lot of string buzz whenever I try it. I really have to uh, take extremely uh, good care of my posture. Tommy plays this as if it's nothing. This is one of the most difficult chords I've ever found in one of his songs. So sliding down to the third fret, adding in the fourth fret with the ring finger, and then playing with the bar chord down here, the third fret on top. Again, a beautiful chord, but after playing this whole song, you're probably going to need a lot of recovery for the left hand. Now, there is an alternative as well for that last chord, and it actually, it's, it's sort of a double win. It, it, it involves a very easy, but to uh, non-guitar players, a very cool looking technique. Uh, it, it looks very difficult, while all you're doing is actually taking the easiest way out. You're moving this chord down. You're going to tap with the index finger on the fourth fret of the low E string, going to tap in the bass note. Couldn't be easier. So this, this now becomes a really easy chord. And to add in some extra flair, you can even tap in and then use the, the ring finger or the pinky to strum, lightly strum that third fret that you normally played down here uh, above the sound hole and just really, really softly strum. Take that all together. And there you go. That's exactly the same thing that Tommy plays. It looks as if you're doing the most complicated stuff while you're actually taking very, very much the easy way out. This is a lot easier than adding in that ring finger, especially if your hands are a bit smaller. So, there you go. Easy, easy 
as can be, hammering on with the index finger to the fourth fret and then strumming lightly across the open uh, across the strings while holding down the chord. There you go. Anyway, one more time, the ending section, and then we're done for today. Alternative fingering. notes and in chord so there you go that's close to you from start to finish have fun with this one and i'll see you next time check back soon for another tommy emmanuel tutorial take care and bye bye